Let's talk about some ways that you can minimize the need to advocate for yourself in labor well before labor begins. So it all comes down to two things. One, finding the right provider, and two, being confident in your own skills to communicate, but also having a partner in the room who has strong communication skills themselves. So let's first talk about finding the right provider for you. For maternity care, there are different levels of risk factors and needs, which means that there are correlating different levels of providers who might be um, who you are seeing for your appointments, as well as who's gonna be there for your birth. So low risk pregnancies um, across the world are mainly attended by midwives. In the US, we have a long history of midwifery, but it has changed. Um, and there was almost a like wiping out of all of the midwives. This is very complicated history. I can get into it in a different video. Um, but there was a period of time where we basically switched our model of care in the US from midwifery care to obstetrics and brought birth from community into the hospital. And when that switch happened, um, midwifery was basically demonized until the advent of certified nurse midwifery um, and then CPM, certified professional midwives, started to be able to practice again and be a little bit more incorporated into maternity care in the U.S., but still to date, less than 5% of the births in the U.S. are actually attended by midwives but we know much more than 5% of births in the US are actually low risk. And when we look at the studies of care and outcomes for mom and for baby, low risk pregnancies do better under midwifery care than low risk pregnancies do under OBGYN care. But culturally in the US, most people are cared for by an OBGYN. Whereas in the rest of the world, pretty much everybody starts out in midwifery care, and then as they present new risk factors, they start going up the levels, right? So then they have a consulting OB, maybe a full transfer of care to an OBGYN, maybe needing a consult with a maternal fetal medicine, kind of going up the ranks from there, getting specialists onto your birth team. But I first just want to encourage you to think about, especially if you're in the US, who do I fit better? Who are my outcomes going to be better with in my specific risk circumstance? So if you are low risk, I encourage you to look for midwifery care first. And then if you present risk factors, then start looking into going up into OBGYN care, getting maternal fetal medicine on board, etc. So the first is just making sure that your provider is, um, you know, the specialized who's giving the best outcome for your risk demographic. Secondly is no matter who you end up with your provider, they should always be collaborative in their care. And so you want to start, if you have preferences for your birth, you want to start having those discussions early on. Sure, they may not want to go through all the nitty little gritty details in one appointment right away in the beginning. Um, however, they should be willing to have time and space to have conversations with you, hear you out for your preferences, and be honest with you whether or not they are going to be the provider that is supportive of those things. Here is a little tip. If you ask, are you supportive of low intervention birth? They're going to say, oh yeah, sure, of course. We don't use things unless we need them. That's not really an answer, right? They're often going to say, oh yeah, sure. And then, but then when they come down to what their policies, how they routinely practice, it's an IV for everybody. I break waters at five centimeters. We use continuous monitoring for everybody. These are all things that don't actually support lower intervention birth, right? So you wanna get specific early on about what their policies are um, and ask them in what ways do you support low intervention births? How do you treat your clients who have a preference for low intervention birth differently than clients who have a preference for a medicalized birth that want to use all of the things? Neither of those preferences are wrong. Neither of those preferences are better than one another, but you wanna make sure that your provider is aligned with your goals and what your desired birth experience is. You want to not be dismissed in these conversations or put off 
um, because that is just going to set yourself up to feel dismissed in your labor experience, right? Um, the hard truth is you're likely not going to be the exception to that provider's rule. You might have a non-supportive provider and you might think, well, I can still do this on my own terms and the way I want to do it. Sure, you absolutely can. People have birth experiences, you know, in, in all different kinds of settings with all different kinds of providers. However, just looking at, you know, the numbers and statistics, are you likely going to be that exception? If 99% of the time this provider provides care in a certain way, are you likely to be that 1% who just happens to not have those things happen to them? Probably not. So that's why it's just so important to set yourself up before with finding the right provider um, and care for you and having those conversations before you get into your birth experience. It's a lot harder to advocate and have those conversations in the moment. Because if you listened to the previous lessons, I talked about how as labor progresses, your brain waves start cycling down and you get in those deeper levels of subconsciousness. If you are staying in a heightened awareness in your sympathetic nervous system, uh, in your sympathetic nervous system where you are in that fight or flight mode and your prefrontal cortex is constantly having to fire to have these kind of higher level conversations, it's harder for your labor to slow down, progress, relax, and have um, kind of that uninhibited flow of the hormonal exchange. So we want to be able to have all of these conversations beforehand, find the right provider and birthplace for us, and that is going to minimize your need to advocate for yourself in your labor experience. Secondly is making sure that your partner or whoever is in the room with you also has those good communication skills, who is completely on plan with your plan, who is completely on board with that plan. So your partner should be taking the childbirth education with you. They should be able to speak the same language you're speaking. If you share, oh, well, I really didn't want Cytotec, I wanted Cervidil, and they have no idea what the difference is between the two because they didn't do any preparation with you. It's going to be harder for them to explain to your provider why you would choose one over the other or have the questions and know what questions to ask. Why are they recommending one over the other? Um, and so having your partner well prepared and on board with your birth plan and that has taken the same childbirth education as you is going to be so key. Um, and then working with a doula can also help you with scripts, right? Um, she can help prepare you in those prenatal visits on scripts and wording and how to um, kind of advocate for yourself in that experience, as well as your doula will likely be able to ask you questions in front of your provider um, to help remind you of things that you wanted to ask about, um, to help remind you that you can ask for time to consider and have a group conversation with the provider out of the room before they come out and make your and you make your decision um, to remind you of some of those things and kind of slow down these conversations so that you get the time, the space, and the information you need to make amazing decisions for yourself, your baby, and your birth.